Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Uh, you know, Pastor, last night in your message, as you were teaching out of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 6 through 9, you were sp uh, speaking of the life of the slave. But some of the points that you pulled out of your uh, from the study that I, I written down was the importance of walking in the whole in the power of the Holy Spirit, and you've you made some some points that I would like for you to share more on. Uh, one of the things that you said is that you quoted somebody saying, "If conversion is so supernatural in the church, or why is it not evident in the believer?" Uh, one of the other things that you pointed out is. You know, walking, the, the church could have a tendency to walk in the flesh where words are drowned out by the way we live. And so, Pastor, have you seen a decline or decreasing of the power of the Holy Spirit within the... Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There, there, was, there was a declension of the power of the Spirit and its manifestation in a biblical sense for a long time. I mean, before I got saved... It was evident that the church, by and large, was walking more in the energies of the flesh and man's imagination and man's own, we'll say, man's own standard of moral virtues and and things. Even though uh, the world I grew up in in the early days of my life was very much influenced through um, Christian uh, philosophy and thought. I mean. It's been said, and probably n not too far from the truth, John, that um, the unbeliever in the 50s lived a more moral life than the so-called believers in our day. And there's, there is some, some truth to that. Because I grew up in a time when you could uh, leave your, uh, your front door unlocked. You could leave the car keys in the vehicle your bicycle in the front yard. You could open windows in your neighborhood when it was hot at night. You would say hello to your neighbors and your neighbors would actually watch over you when the, your parents weren't around. That was the 50s, that's how I grew up and that you know, obviously came from the atmosphere of the 40s and prior to that. And, and so today, the average person who is listening to this right now would more than likely say, well gosh, that was then, but this is now. What's the difference? The difference is is the church uh, today is uh, so overwhelmed, I think, by the temptations and pressures of the world that many forget who they are in Christ. They simply don't know who they are. My son David used to have a Rottweiler, a Rottweiler, a good-sized dog, 90 to 100 pounds, and I took I took his Roddy on a walk around our church grounds and <clears throat> just up the, uh, up the, in our parking lot just to the south of us, I was walking the dog and uh, we came upon a chain link fence of one of our neighbors who had a goose there, uh, a couple of geese. And the Roddy became interested in looking at this, uh, these two geese, uh, male and female, and she pressed her nose against the fence and the male you know opened up his wings and started making noises and that rottweiler started running and started dragging me and it made me it made me laugh but it also made me aware of the fact that christians are like that today i mean god has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness through jesus christ when paul was writing to the corinthians he said to the corinthians carnal people that they were that they have come behind in no spiritual gifts, that God has enriched them in everything, right? And the church of today, because we have gotten caught up with either emotions, I want to feel good when I come out of church, or caught up with politics, I want to know who I should vote for and what's the current events, or, you know, social events within the church, I want to make sure I go to this particular potluck or whatever, and when you have your home Bible studies, uh, or if you have fellowship at all outside of, um, you know, formal studies, the small groups that you may join have uh, very surface-oriented teachings that, that don't, don't go into practical uh, things related to life for Christ, but they're more fluff than depth. That's, that's pretty much current. And so what happens 
is the church very much forgets who we are in Christ. Maybe because, one, is because there's an absence of Bible reading for the average Christian. The average Christian isn't in the Word daily, isn't in prayer daily. The average Christian, as I know, come, uh, come to church on occasion or perhaps will be involved in one form or another, but it's not, as, it's not what it should be. And so, yes, I really believe that the church is asleep in the light and that we really need to wake up. And I'm not saying that we need to become angry and militant and march and let our voices be known and look at me. I have X amount of people in my church, therefore I'm great and you need to listen to me, political person. Because that's that. none of that works. The only thing that works is prayer and living for Christ and being true to the gospel and sharing and knowing who you are in Jesus Christ, John. And that's the key, isn't it? I mean, before you got right with the Lord, you were raised in a Christian home, but you didn't live for Christ. You went in the exact opposite. But when you got saved and you were delivered from all those bad habits and sins, the gratitude of your heart it was exposed, and then God was able to pour in his power and his presence. And and now look at you. You know, you serve with faithfulness. You, you teach the word to men, and you have a very good Bible study and very good ministry. Why is that? It's because of what God does in, in the heart of a thankful sinner that's been forgiven. That's how that works. And so, yeah, I, I believe that the church is running on on uh, three cylinders. And, and, and then that it's time for us to awaken, especially in these last days, especially in the times that we're living in. We need to, to stand in the Lord. Amen. And I want to encourage you guys to come to our church. I mean, we have services at, on Sundays at 8.30 and 10.45 and you're welcome. Invite your friends and family. And if this isn't your fellowship and you happen to come across our our, our, our time here, get involved into a, in a church that is Bible teaching. Yeah, amen. And, and get involved into the ministries and, and be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit because, as you said, Pastor, the church is running on empty. Well, I'll tell you one thing, John, and, and we can close with this. I want to be mindful of our time. But the one of the ways that you can know whether you're being taught the Word of God is after the Bible study, if someone can walk up to you and point to the verses that you went through and ask what is the proper understanding of that verse. That's how you know. Because there are churches, I've, I've talked to people, like, and I've been doing this a long time, and oh yeah, I go to a Bible-leaving church. We, get, we hear the Word of God every Sunday. Really? What did you study this last week? Well, we looked at this portion of Scripture. Okay, open it up and tell me what that means. And they... Um, they get, they get kind of like a mental block is because they weren't taught that verse. They were taught something that wasn't even in that verse, and that's the problem. See, I really do believe that real Bible teaching, well, the, it's like this. The time will come when people will no longer endure healthy teaching, healthy doctrine, but will voluntarily turn aside from truth and turn into fables. And that is what has happened today in many places. But you don't, you don't understand... You know, Pastor Rosales, uh, when my pastor preaches, he crawls across the floor. I've seen that. When my pastor preaches, and he jumps, you know, because the Holy Spirit is on him. And when my pastor preaches, you know, they, they talk about that. But at the end of the day, yeah, it doesn't matter how high he went in the air, how straight does he walk when he lands, right? And uh, are, are you walking in the Spirit with, you know, because remember in the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love, but it's also self-control. So is your life under control? Are you, uh, are you still drinking? Well, the scripture says, you know, be not drunk with wine, wherein is dis dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Why does the Bible tell me to reject the carnal inclinations of flesh and, and the various things that can provoke me to do uh, things that uh, don't have self-control in them and rather tells me, you know, walk in the Spirit, and in the Spirit you will have self-control. Why does it say that? And here's the thing is a lot of believers, you know, right now people are turning me off because they don't like it. But the bottom line is a lot of professing believers are just really not being taught, John. And, um, oh, well, teaching's boring. Really? You know, well, I, I don't think so. God's word is never boring. And when we're open to what he wants to do, our lives are changed. Amen. That matters. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, uh we're shedding some light because yeah we, we we're in a time where we need to be filled with the power of the holy spirit and go to a bible teaching church and put it into practice put it into practice especially in these last and dark yes, days yes so, well thank you pastor david thank you guys for tuning in again I want to remind you that 
We have our church services at 8.30 and 10.45. would love for you guys to come out and join us. We're worshiping the Lord, spending time in God's Word. Invite a friend and family to come join us and to join you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Thank Amen. you, Pastor David. God bless Thank you guys. You. Thank you for tuning in.